Skies are gray for another day across much of the area. Thanks for tuning in to 13 News Now at 5. I'm Janet Roach. And I'm Dana Smith. David is off tonight and the clouds are there and we're still seeing some showers around the area. Meteorologist Evan Stewart is in now with the evening forecast. That's right and we are tracking some of those showers and thunderstorms in the area. We've seen one or two pop up here across parts of the south side, the peninsula and middle peninsula, a little bit more towards the eastern shore and the northern neck and a lot of rain, especially long and south of the Albemarle Sound. You can see how it's really filled in here over the past several hours and we have seen some heavier rain through southern parts there, Camden and Currituck County, the extreme southeastern tip there of Camden County right along the North River as we zoom in a little bit more here east of Goose Creek. Again, a lot of that is some of the marshland along the river, but there is some heavier rain north and east of Sailboat Road extending over into Currituck County and 158 around Poplar Branch. And we've also seen some of that heavier rain continuing up across areas of the eastern shore here around Coocheville, a little bit of a heavier downpour, but some heavy rain west of Hallwood near Belinda and Saxis and Bullbecker. That's been slowly drifting off towards the north and west. So through the remainder of the evening, best chances for the rain will likely remain along and south of the state line. Might have a few of those showers that try to drift just a little bit north in the south side. But again, general idea, scattered areas of rain, especially off towards the south, just an isolated shower in areas off towards the north by 10 o'clock. Temperatures into the low to mid 70s and we'll see a few 60s by midnight or so. Temperatures will be going up over the next few days. Still a chance for some of those isolated showers and thunderstorms to pop up during the afternoon and evening. We'll time things out a little bit more with future cast and I'll have the 70 outlook that's coming up in a few minutes. The number of people killed in two mass shootings over the weekend is now up to 31. More than 50 others were hurt in the tragedies in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio. The initial numbers were 20 dead in El Paso and nine in Dayton. But today, two more victims from the El Paso shooting died at the hospital. People in both communities are in mourning tonight, along with people across the country. The son of one of the people killed in El Paso says he's devastated and scared for his own life. We're afraid to go out to the street because we feel like we're being hunted. I mean, because of our, cause our color, our skin color. Hmm. People took the El Paso shooter into custody. He's charged with capital murder right now, but federal authorities may charge him with domestic terrorism. Police shot and killed the Dayton shooter after just about a minute. They're still trying to figure out his motive. Tonight, President Trump is pushing a six point plan to address the mass shooting crisis in the U.S. He spoke in a special address this morning condemning what happened in Texas and Ohio and announced that his administration will take steps to stop this kind of thing from happening again. I am directing the Department of Justice to work in partnership with local, state, and federal agencies, as well as social media companies to develop tools that can detect mass shooters before they strike. The president didn't mention anything on it, spanning background checks or banning assault weapons. President Trump did call the shootings domestic terrorism and called on the country to condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. And new at five, we just got a statement from Governor Ralph Northam reacting to this weekend's violence. In a statement, he said he and his wife are grieving with the El Paso and Dayton communities and with the families of the victims. He also called for common sense gun control. Governor Northam ended his statement by saying, quote, the time to save lives is now. At least two of the victims of this weekend's violence had ties to Hampton Roads. Beatrice Warren Curtis and Monica Brickhouse both worked in Norfolk for several years. They were killed early Sunday morning in Dayton. 13 News Now reporter Stephen Graves spoke to a former co-worker who was still close to them. Yeah, Janet, it just goes to show you how something can happen hundreds of miles away but still have a wide-ranging impact. And tonight the friends of these two women say that their lives are changed as well. I saw some of the pictures and it just breaks my heart. Um, they were just really nice people. Tanya Amos is still in shock after getting that dreaded call. I was devastated. That her two former co-workers and friends are the latest victims of a mass shooting in America. They did not deserve to 
you know, be killed and murdered in the street. She says Monica Brickhouse and Beatrice Curtis were the best of friends. They sat next to each other at work in Norfolk for years and forged a bond. They laugh, joke, party, have fun. They like to have a good time. Which is why she says Beatrice was most likely in Dayton to see Monica, who recently moved from Virginia Beach to her home state of Ohio. A sole gunman would seemingly kill them at random in a busy nightlife district last weekend. Well, Monica has a son that still has to grow up, a family. Um, Beatrice never had an opportunity to have kids. Now, Amos says it's like a piece of her family is gone. They were like daughters to me and I had the opportunity to mentor them, see them grow. Um, they both had aspirations to continue their professional growth. She hopes telling their stories will invoke some type of change. I just wish people that need help would go and get help instead of taking innocent lives. And Amos says Monica's family is, of course, devastated by this, while friends are trying to get a hold of Beatrice's mother, who we're told lives in Isle of Wight County. Stephen Graves, 13 News Now. Mm. All right, Stephen, thank you. Well, tonight, flags all across the country are flying at half staff. President Trump ordered they be lowered after this weekend's violence. He went on to call both shootings unspeakable acts of evil. And coming up in less than 10 minutes, a group of protesters marches on the streets of D.C. calling for change in the wake of the tragedies. The specific bill they're pushing for. The search for a missing boater in Norfolk comes to a sad end. Police tell us they found a body they believe is that boater. Crews pulled the body from the Willoughby boat ramp near 13th View Street around 1.30 today. First responders showed up to 8th View Street last night around 6 when the Coast Guard says a man in his 50s started struggling in his boat when the weather turned bad. Police still aren't releasing the man's name until they can notify his family. Tonight, the lights are back on after a fire damaged a circuit breaker in Virginia Beach's town center. It happened when storms rolled through the area yesterday and forced some businesses to close their doors hours early. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton spoke to some business managers and joins us live in Virginia Beach. Well, Janet, several places in town center went dark last night. One of those places right here, Corks. The manager says the restaurant doesn't usually close until 10 o'clock on Sunday nights, but it had to close hours earlier because they had no power. Hey, how are you? Good, good. What are you drinking today? The lights are shining bright after a night in the dark. Thankful, thankful. Came in and we had power. Manager Jacqueline Brown didn't know what to expect after shutting Cork's restaurant down early Sunday because a circuit breaker caught fire nearby. Thousands of Dominion Energy customers in the town center area of Virginia Beach lost electricity for several hours. And this morning, no flooding like from freezers leaking or anything like that. Dominion Energy spokeswoman Benita Billingsley Harris says power came back on for most people around 3 o'clock this morning. Crews had to reroute lines as they tried to fix the burn part. I mean, we work year round to harden our system to make sure that it can withstand storms. But, you know, a storm like this with strong winds and lightning, you just never know what kind of damage it could cause. Crews continue to investigate how the fire started. Harris says based on the timing of the storm, they determined it was not from a lightning strike. But it does look like the, the fire caused a lot of damage to our equipment and our substation there uh, in the Thalia area and a lot of customers are fed by that substation. So um, unfortunately, it knocked out power to quite a few people. And um, I'm just grateful that we were able to get most of them back on overnight and they can go back to business as usual today. And business is back booming for Corks. Brown says she'll continue brightening people's day. Very much so. When they stop in. And Brown says this morning she checked all the foods and drinks just to make sure they were all good to go. She says last night before she left, she made sure everything was sealed and the refrigerator door was closed tight. Live in Virginia Beach, Allie Weatherton, 13 News Now. Tomorrow, the man accused of setting a Virginia Beach apartment building on fire is set to appear in court. Kelly Haverson faces several charges. There is a bond hearing scheduled for his case. He was supposed to have one today, but it got pushed back. Haverson is accused of setting this fire at the Pembroke Town Center apartments last month. It forced more than a dozen people out of their homes. Police arrested him nearly a week after the fire.
We're learning new information about the murder of a William and Mary football player. Nate Evans died back in March. Now the charges against his accused killer, Krishan Beeman, are headed to a grand jury. 13 News Now reporter Megan Perrier was in the courtroom for the hearing today. She joins us now in the newsroom. Megan? And it was an emotional day in court. Both friends and family members of the victim and the suspect were crying out during the entire witness testimony. Creshawn Beeman faced a Norfolk judge at a preliminary hearing Monday. Beeman is the 20 year old who's accused of killing William and Mary running back Nate Evans. With that hearing came a lot more detail about Evans final moments before he died in March. Evans best friend since seventh grade said he and Evans smoked weed that night, then drove to sell marijuana to someone Evans was messaging on Snapchat. The person's name was Pocket. The friend said they met Pocket on 43rd Street, where he got into the backseat of their car. The friend said he realized Pocket was Beeman. He told the court that as Beeman checked out the weed, Evan said, don't try anything. Seconds later, Beeman took off to Ward Collie Avenue and Evans chased after him. The witness said he heard three gunshots. Beeman's attorney, Andrew Sachs, said no one actually saw his client pull the trigger. Based on what the prosecution has presented, uh, it doesn't appear they have anybody that they've identified who can say they saw what happened, much less that our client did anything. Evans' friend said he hid behind a home, scared for his own life. Then he went to check on Evans, who was dead. The friend said he then ran back to his apartment and flushed the rest of their drugs in the toilet before he went back to talk to police. The judge certified all charges against Beeman, including second degree murder. Sachs says his client is innocent. He has been, we believe, wrongfully accused. But at trial, the prosecution has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he did this. The Commonwealth hasn't shown that he fired a weapon, hadn't shown that he did anything to the victim. And I think that eventually we, we look forward to the day when Krishan is exonerated. Coming up on 13 News Now at 6 o'clock, I'll tell you what item police found at the scene that they believe connects Beeman to the murder. Live in the newsroom, I'm Megan Perrier, 13 News Now.